Market selling off amid a sharp drop in that yield. It dipped below the two-year Treasury shortly before 6 a.m. today. That yield curve inversion is often seen as a strong recession indicator. So let's put the question to our panelists. Uh, joining us now is Mona Mahajan. She's a U.S. strategist at Alliance Global Investors. Ryan Payne is president of Payne Capital Management. Welcome to you both on what is an exciting day <laughs> in the markets, to say the least. Uh, you know, we saw uh, the minute that, that the yield curve inversed, or we should say inverted. Yes. Um, we saw the big sell off there, but, but is it time to kind of maybe take a step back, take a deep breath, or are there real red flags that we're seeing because of the yield curve? I think it's more of the former. I mean, we've seen this before, and the yield curve, I mean, it could be like 18 months out before you even see a recession or the market even goes down. It's like, what do I go on vacation for a year, come back, and then look at my portfolio? Also, if you look at the late 90s, you had 95, 98, and 2000, you had inverted yield curves, and the market had a phenomenal run there. So, I, you know, there's a lot of weight right now in that inverted yield curve, but I think it's kind of, uh, you know, it's an overreaction in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, we would tend to agree. I think one thing that we're watching is sometimes what happens is a lot of algorithmic trading occurs based on triggers like an inverted yield curve. So once the yield curve inverts, that will trigger a sell uh, algorithm to execute, and we will get this exacerbated move in the marketplace. What we're watching more broadly is clearly we had negative data come out of Europe, out of China last night. But in the U.S., you know, we're slowing, but we're not hitting recessionary levels yet. We had those tariffs move back, uh, the 10 percent tariffs, which would have uh, impacted consumer more than ordinary. And I think that's the key for the U.S. We're a 70 percent uh, consumer driven economy here. If the consumer holds up OK, we're just slowing and we're not hitting a recessionary environment and we have a Fed cutting rates into that. It's actually not a bad backdrop for, for risk assets broadly. You talk about that data we got out of China mm -hmm. uh, weaker than expected. Yeah. We got the industrial production numbers, mm -hmm. uh, the consumption numbers, uh, certainly all were lower than expected. We also got a negative print, a GDP print from Germany. I mean, is that what pushed you? Yields lower. What exactly was the trigger on that front? Yeah, I mean, I think our 10 year yield tends to be driven by two things one, the economic outlook, and two, what's happening globally with rates. So, the, on the second part of it, globally, we're being anchored down by over $15 trillion of negative yielding debt out there. Uh, on the economic front, like we talked about, the global picture is softening. The worry is can that come to the U.S. shore as well? Right now, we are certainly seeing uh, probably this year GDP will print two, two and a half percent. It's still, you know, above potential growth, but lower than last year's nearly three percent growth rate. So. Yeah. And Ryan, you said that you know some of the sell-off that we're seeing today is a bit of profit taking. I mean, you look at what happened yesterday in the markets. We saw a big right. rally on the back of some tariff relief. Um, is this actually a good opportunity to get in? I mean, absolutely. Like, what's changed? We just talked about the fundamentals. I mean, look, and that's what you have to look at, right? GDP is relatively strong, and you know, it's slower than last year. But last year we had a tax break, so it was kind of artificially engineered to be a bit higher. This is the normal growth we've had for ten years now. Mm -hmm. You've got, inf you know, you've got inflation low, which is excellent for the consumer. And I think we don't talk enough about that. The consumer is in like the best shape they've been in in a very long time. They're not leveraged like they were before 2007. Um, people are actually like paying down debt, which is shocking in America. Um, so I think when you look at that and you look at the fact that this is the second sell off we had this year, we hadn't had many opportunities to actually get into the market. Like you've got to take advantage of these opportunities. They just don't happen yeah. that often. Uh, when you look at sectors, one of the biggest decliners on the day are financials, which is not surprising given um, that we're seeing the yields come down. Is this the time to get in on the big banks? I mean, they've entered correction territory. Do you go in now, or is the expectation that it's going to push yeah. even lower? I use this line too often, but I think it is a gift from the gods. Because um, we're talking about yields, and I mean, you look at how meager yields are on bonds now. It's mm. just getting silly. And if you look at stocks right now, I mean, the yields on financials specifically are so good. You're getting like 3 4% yields. You've had a lot of stock buybacks. Um, you've also had a lot of increases in, on the dividends, which will probably continue. So a little bit of weakness in earnings, I would say, like take advantage of it right now. Multiples are very cheap on banks and definitely buy. Mona, what about you? How does this change your strategy, or does it change at all? Yeah, you know, typically we've been um, favoring a barbell approach in equity markets in particular. One hand of that barbell has been the technology trade, specifically those areas of tech that are not levered to China but can do well longer term. So mobile payments, cybersecurity, cloud. Um, so long term, maybe long duration in a lower yield environment stories. On the other hand of that barbell, we're pretty defensive. So we like the staples. We like parts of REITs, uh, even parts of healthcare that have lagged and, and 
potentially have the room to play catch up here. So I think that approach has worked well. I think as we move forward, that's what we'd continue to favor. Uh, perhaps the defensive part becomes more important as we kind of just uh, prepare ourselves for slower growth going forward. And finally, going back to what you said about bonds earlier, if you look mm -hmm. at the picture globally, I mean, the, the U.S. Treasury is still <laughs> yielding yes. much better mm -hmm. than what we're seeing, uh, like the German boon, for example. Um, how much of, of what we're seeing in the global picture, the bond picture, is distorted because of central bank buying? I think it's, it's what started it, but we were talking about this offset. I mean, you have literally almost $500 billion going to bond funds this year. And so that's a lot of that's retail money just being completely irrational. And I start looking at, I'm going to get a negative yield on a German Bund, and I could buy like a basket of mm. high dividend paying European stocks paying like 5 6% right now. Like at some point, you have to say, this is crazy. There should be some money going into equities here because equities, again, are just so cash flow rich. Yeah, you know, generally speaking, there's this hunt for income going on across the globe. Uh, those, you know, people that are looking for a savings rate and, uh, you know, a, a yield and interest rate, where do they go? Well, you know, like Ryan talked about, we also think there's some value in higher yielding dividend stocks, both in Europe and the U.S. Uh, there are also parts of, you know, the U.S. investment grade market, convertibles, preferred bonds, for example. There are pockets of value where we see for those people hunting for income here. So I think there's still value out there. Um, and I think we could be getting some buying opportunities. Opportunities soon. Okay, Mona Mahajan and Ryan Payne, thanks for stopping by. Thank, Thank you. you.